Good evening, wrestling fans. Welcome to another edition of Evolution of Pro Wrestling. Tonight, we're going to be conducting an interview with a very unique superstar. <coughs> Excuse me. From uh, He's going to, be, going to be competing at Law Division on June 22nd in Brooklyn. We're going to be welcoming in Sanagori Taino Sagrado Ramos. He is the ceremonial war chief, which is going to be telling us more about that as we go along. And we're going to be uh, inviting him in within the next uh, minute or two. <coughs> Excuse me. As we go along. Okay, he's going to tell us about his career, how he started, how he uh, became a cer ceremonial war chief, as well as the, uh, promoting the June 22nd Law Division Lucha Libre in Brooklyn. So we're just waiting for him to plug in. And as soon as he plugs in, we'll be welcoming him, welcoming him, in, him into the show. I'll just give us a few minutes and we're just waiting for him to uh, come on. In the meantime, we're just going to be promoting our show for this Friday. As always, we will be having our topic as superstars have been rejected by WCW and WWE and became major stars in that particular issue. So we'll definitely uh, be talking about that and more. So we're just waiting for him to come on right now. Let's see if we can invite him here. Okay, he went on YouTube. Okay. All right. I'm sorry about that. Give me one moment, guys. I'm sorry about this. Decline the invite. All right, let's try it again. Okay, Salakori, accept the invite. There we are. How you doing, All sir? Right. Good, good. I got it finally. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, sir. It's uh, I like the gimmick. I like the uh, ceremonial war chief uh, gimmick here. It's impressive. Definitely, definitely. This is a real ceremonial headdress, actually. It's a real ceremonial headdress that I use in cer Taino ceremonies and indigenous ceremonies as well. That's good. That's good. Uh, how did that come about? How did you become mm -hmm. a actual uh, ceremonial war chief? Well, back in the 90s, I, uh, I became a member of, uh, of the Taino movement here in New York City. Um, through mutual friends, we got together, we would educate each other, educate the public. I started doing school events, and then I was invited by a group called My CT, Yucayeke, which means village. And My CT means the people of the corn. And they invited me as their uh, spiritual leader, or what they call Bejique. And, okay. and I was back there, like in, in the late 90s, early 2000s. That's impressive. We, we have seen a few videos that you have uh, been promoting, you know, uh, ritual of Indian, you know, which is good, of uh, mm -hmm. a certain ritual, certain ancestors in the past, which right. is good, which catches a lot of interest from people, which is very good. You know, not too mm -hmm. many people, you know, take to, to liking to that, but you're actually embracing that, which is good. <clears throat> and, you know, that's mm -hmm. small power to you, brother, and uh, I'm glad that makes you feel good. Now, you Thank became you. a professional wrestler. <clears throat> Excuse mm -hmm. me. What made you become a professional wrestler? Like what? When when did you start? Well, the actual seeds were were planted back when I was a little child. I used to 
watch professional wrestling, Lucha Libre, Channel 41 on Wednesdays uh, with my great grandfather. My whole family were big wrestling fans. Um, my first wrestling match in Madison Square Garden was Bob Backlund versus Kim Patera for the world title, Texas death match. My uncle and my grandfather took me. And that's when I said to myself, I want to be a professional wrestler. I remember that day meeting Bob Backlund. And I said, I wanted to do this. So fast forward four years ago, Frankie Flo and myself, we, you know, we, we met up at the Bronx Puerto Rican parade and, and Frankie had a great idea. He wanted me to uh, be part of his wrestling company, Legendary Action Wrestling as an actual vehicle, a ceremonial leader. And, and I started like that blessing the ring. He, let, he allowed me to do that. Cause you know, at any given time a wrestler can get injured or God forbid even killed, you know? And like recently, you know, Silver King, God bless him and his family. So, you know, when I bless that ring, it's it's something where, you know, I'm revoking the ancestors, you know. Many of these wrestlers in Legend of Action Wrestling, you know, Boricuas or Dominican, you know, they're connected to the Taino, you know, ancestry. So so I take I took that very seriously. And I remember it was one uh, it was one show in which I was part of the show and I remember I was being choked. And that was the night I introduced Super Taino into the legendary action wrestling. And I remember hearing the fans supporting me, not just me, but but what this represents. You know, they you know, people really felt that, like, man, this, you know, this is this is a Bahike, he's gonna get hurt, you know, they're gonna hurt him. So I remember telling Frankie afterwards, listen, I wanna be a wrestler, I wanna be a pro wrestler. Um uh, I wanna go to the next level, not just manager, you know, which was great, you know. But I, I wanted my, my calling, like, you know, when I was 12 years old was to be a professional wrestler. So I thank Frankie Flo for that opportunity. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Frankie Flo, um, great promoter, great athlete. Um, we've had mm -hmm. him on the show several times, which we're actually going to have him on the show again this Wednesday. <clears throat> Excuse me. My apologies. We're going to have him on the flow. Uh, also preparing for the show this upcoming Saturday, uh, June 22nd, Law Division Lucha mm -hmm. Libre in Brooklyn. Um, That's right. In your in your time of the business, who has been your most uh, fierce opponent? Like who who have you enjoyed being in the ring with so far since in this short amount of time that you've been in the ring? Wow. <laughs> well, I tell you, I have utmost respect for all the wrestlers that I that have trained me. You know, who who really pushed me to the limit. You know, both psychologically and physically. It's, it's hard to name one. I only had like five experiences so far in the ring, two battle royals, um, two three three man tag team, and and one individual. But but I did have the opportunity to wrestle um, Eric Jaden for the Law um, World Heavyweight Title. Um, I was not I was not ready. I was super green, uh, super raw, but you know. Um, at that given day, it was in Connecticut. I was given the opportunity to step in the square circle, and I was scared. I almost passed out. I think, <laughs> you know, when, when I do my ceremonies, I always get that that nervous feeling, you know, because you want to help the people connect to the you know highest power. But that day, I was like, whoa, you know, and uh, I got beat up really bad. And even after the match, I don't know where I was, <laughs> but. But I kept thinking of uh, what, what they would, what they taught me in training, you know, stay focused, don't overthink, you know, which is the hardest thing to overthink. But that was my greatest moment in my life, you know, Eric Jaden. And uh, I know he's a super heel now, but but I do have a, a most respect for him and and his, what he's doing in his career. But that's good. He, he no, he's another excellent athlete. We've seen him with the uh, the new Sas Satsujin uh, squad now. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. Him and Frankie Flo had a fierce rivalry going on, you know, as you noticed when they mm -hmm. were in uh, LAW and BWF. Um, and I know that rivalry is far from over, you know, but you took that experience. <laughs> you took that experience when you went in the mm -hmm. ring, you know, what mm -hmm. you got yourself into a title match. You know what it was. You got that feeling. Now you know what it is to go forward. Um, right. I always ask the talent this question, and I'm going to ask the same thing to you. If you had a chance right now for you mm -hmm. to have a match, a dream match right now, who would it be? Whoa. Who would your a, opponent be? Whoa, that's a deep question. You know, 
to tell you the truth, um, you know, growing up as a wrestling fan, and you know, we we've we always I, I can speak for myself, and I hear a lot of wrestlers talk about this. Um, we talk about um, wrestling that invisible wrestler, you know, that invisible opponent, and 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 my opponent has always been like like the dirtiest player, someone like Ric Flair, you know. But when I first met um, Dirtbag Dan, you know, I, I really was, was drawn to his character, you know, or, or who he is as a wrestler as well. And I said, if I ever, before I hang up my my boots and stuff and my headdress as a wrestler, I would love to get in the ring with Dirtbag, Dirtbag Dan, you know, because that's, that, that's the kind of opponent I, I always fought through the years, you know, the ultimate heel, you know, and desecrating my headdress and so on, you know, and uh, doing my best to fight someone like that or wrestle someone like that, even a hardcore match even. <laughs> no, that's good. That's really good it, uh, that you have that dream match that you, you, you know, anything can happen in wrestling. You you know that. You witness that. Mm-hmm. And that goes anywhere in the indie promotions, WWE, mm-hmm. and AEW, all types of stuff. You know, mm-hmm. you had mentioned Frankie Flo. Um, he, mm-hmm. you know, he brought you into the business about four years ago. Um, was there anyone else that influenced you in to become a wrestler, you know, to take that next step to say, you know what, come on, let's just do it. Like get in the ring. Let, let's see what you can do. You know, let's see your heart. You know, is there anyone else in particular you can mention out there? Well, I, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Gino Caruso. He's, he's opened <clears throat> his doors to me in uh, East Coast Professional Wrestling uh, School. Um, again, I, I still remember my first day. When I entered the school, I, I couldn't even feel my knees. You know, I was buckling. And and uh, I saw the confidence that Gino possessed, what he was doing as a teacher, and also uh, giving me the opportunity. And and, and uh, I know Frankie Flo was there that night. And wow, that was an experience, you know. And again, I, I, I had to tell myself, you know, why are you here? Why are you here? And and, I, and and my mind kept telling me, what the hell are you doing here, you know? But but seeing Gino, um, his calmness and, and his, his focus as a trainer, I um, someone was like looking up to, a, you know, a, a true teacher, you know, a master of what he does. So, I felt, so that calmed me down, you know? In, in, even though I was scared, you know, training and stuff that first night, it, I, I, I'm able to come back, you know? I'm able to come back because I know I'm, I'm in good hands with Gino, you know, and a lot of the other uh, veterans as well. That's good. And I'm, and I'm sure he's watching this and viewing this as well as Frankie Flo. Mm-hmm. June 22nd, Law Division, Lucha Libre mm-hmm. in Brooklyn. <laughs> you, have the, you pretty much have the floor right now to promote the entire show, promote any talent you're going to be going up against. Any, you can tell the fans where to go to this event, the address, time, mm-hmm. Tickets, all that stuff. The floor is yours. Okay, I want to call. I, w- I want to tell everyone out there. You know, all the fans. We need you out there. We need you to support professional wrestling, the independent circuit, legendary action wrestling, which is the vision of East Coast professional wrestling. Again, Junio 22. That's June 22nd in the beautiful city of Brooklyn. Let me give you the address: 14B, 53rd Street, and that's in Brooklyn, New York the soccer roof or um, the rooftop. And I just want to mention that for all you Native Americans out there, this is on First Avenue, uh, 53rd Street. This is very historical because the uh, original peoples, the Lenape, they all populated that area. It's right by the water, you know, so it's very historical. Um, I invited a lot of Natives to come to represent and, you know, hopefully they'll come out. But, you know, just looking at this at this card, you know, there's all these Lucha Libre, you know, there's a lot of Mexican community, South American community, Boricua community. Uh, my own family um, comes from uh, Sunset Park, my Boricua family. So this this is coming home, you know. And, you know, these wrestlers, they're amazing. You got people like Drago from AAA. You got Super Tiger. You got Rig on Gladiator, um, Astro Negro, you know, this excellent top stars in Lucha Libre. And of course, we got the legendary, legendary action um, wrestlers that will be in that ring. So it's, it's it, and I'm very excited right now. I'm, I'm like, whoa, I'm there, you know? So this is going to be amazing, June 22nd. Doors open at 6.30. If fans want to uh, get some autographs, 
there's going to be some excellent um, wrestlers there, like Frankie Flo and his son, the Zombie King, Flo Jr., um, Eric Jaden. Is you know the list is is endless. It's going to be amazing. Hey, they, also, they, they, might, Jr. They, they might want an autograph from you too. You know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. Definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'm calling all my warriors out there to come out. You know, this will be, this will be great. You know, and and I know I'm gonna mention to the Taino community to come out, the indigenous, the the Lenape. You know, hopefully they're gonna be there that night with the drum. So uh, it's gonna be a, a a wonderful experience. This is culture, you know. Lucha Lita is is as old as the warrior societies. You know, this is this is this is wonderful. Um, so yeah, June twenty second. That's gonna be the night to remember. Right here in the great city of Brooklyn. I can't wait. You know, I can't okay. wait. Okay. No, fans, mm -hmm. New York fans, you've heard it. Uh, Mr. Sanacori Taino Sagrado Ramos, the ceremonial war chief promoting mm -hmm. June 22nd, Lucha Libre Law Division. You're not going to want to miss it. Purchase your tickets in New York City. Mr. Ramos, it's mm -hmm. been a pleasure having you on the show, sir. Thank you for being okay. with us. You've been very professional, and I wish you luck in your... Uh, Korean wrestling. Oh, man. Thank you very much for having me, and good luck and, and blessings are on your career. Okay? Absolutely. And giving us that, 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 that platform, okay? Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Have Bless a good night, sir. Take care. You thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Fans, June 22nd, Law Division Lucha Libre, sponsored by ECPW in Brooklyn, New York, this Saturday, June 22nd. You for joining us as always fans we we appreciate your support thank you for everything from us here in evolution of pro wrestling have a good night